How's it, everybody? Kind of tired. Whew. It's been a bit of a hike. I'm ending up uh, exploring, you know, looking for uh, insects up there, uh, those waterfall. So I thought I'd stop and answer some email. This is uh, this one's from a, a friend of mine I, that uh, wrote to me recently, a young man, uh, pretty much on his own in the world, and this is our second or third correspondent that wrote to ask how he's doing. He says, things have been going well. I've just been mainly concerned with uh, learning. By the way, this is a young man who basically got the short end of the stick starting off in life in terms of uh, uh, his parents basically kind of dropped the ball in a big way and through no fault of his own is uh, at the at the thre threshold, he's just passed the threshold, through the threshold threshold into adulthood and uh, trying, to trying to face his life and decide how to live his life in a way that will uh, allow him to overcome the, uh, the disadvantages that, that he's had and move forward. So just to give you some perspective. Um, he says, I've just been mainly concerned with learning. This is something that's been through his emails, um, this interest in learning. He got short, like I said, he got shorted on the education. He's trying to make up for it now. Knowledge that I may be able to use the rest of my life is, the ki is kind of a hard thing to even consider putting second. Great attitude. Yeah, I mean, that's right. Uh, if you can if you're, you're, every bit of knowledge that you have, whatever the trot, whatever the for whatever fortune may come and go in terms of worldly possessions, that will always be yours and will significantly contribute to the uh, to whatever fortune you have in life, you know, literal fortune. All the other things I should have also done will hopefully be handled soon. I think you're right. If you push on the on the education, you know, are you familiar with the hierarchy of need? You know, made famous by a guy named Maslow. You know, where if you take care of the necessities of life, you know, your your food and, and shelter and, and and warmth, and then you can go go on to beginning to you basically your animal needs. You can then be, begin to take care of the uh, higher needs. You know, the the cognitive stuff, the uh, the, the, the the philosophies, the uh, the ethics of, of the world. So you take care of the basics, and then you'll have room left over to begin working on the uh, on the uh, on on the other stuff in life, the stuff that really makes life a, really a joy. Oh, I read a I read a couple of pages of Walden, which I recommended to him. It is a pretty difficult book to read. In in in, in uh, parentheses there, for me, um, Walden's a tough book for anybody to read, unless you I think unless you were uh, you know contemporary of of the time that Thoreau wrote that, you know, the, what was that, the 18, mid, mid, mid 19th century, 1850s or whatever, um, unless you were a contemporary, uh, Civil War time, I think, unless you were a contemporary of that, this would be very difficult to read. So, uh, um, but that's part of the reason why I, I, I recommended it to you, because in the book, you'll not only will you gain a lot of knowledge from what Thoreau has to say, his observations, at least in terms of what I see as important in life, you'll also, um, get an education, a mini education in vocabulary and a reading uh, because it's complicated to read that. Like I said, keep that dictionary with you. If you can get through a couple chapters, your vocabulary will expound uh, greatly. Um, I sometimes find myself reading a sentence a couple of times to understand it or looking up a word, then I lose track of the story itself. It's surprising to me with the way he describes his townsmen in the first couple of pages that we even wanted to work and live to get this far. Yeah. But keep in mind, and you know, I think I can sum up what you're talking about that Thoreau talks about in that first uh, chapter. I think it's economy. You know, the famous quote, the mass of men leave lives of quiet desperation. What is called resignation is confirmed desperation. From the desperate city, they go to the desperate country and must console themselves with the bravery of minks and muskrats. It was sentences like that, uh, phrases like that, that, that really uh, changed my life as a young man and caused me to... Uh, to want to seek after this kind of stuff. You know, this, this is my richness, this is my wealth. Uh, not necessarily nature itself, but freedom and independence. Um, that, that spirit that's embodied in that. Now for a lot of people, probably a minority it seems, uh, that is something that they want to actually pursue in life. A lot of other people, for example my wife, a very intelligent, uh, very uh, considered wonderful human being, has really little interest in that type of thing. In, she has little interest in certainly hiking, but in terms of uh, striking out on her own way, she wants to kind of understand the norms of Japanese culture and just follow along those norms. It's fine with her. And uh, we work well together in, in, in a kind of a, uh, a give and take manner. She gives me something in terms of grounding me in society and I give her a lot of fun. I try, at least I try to. So yeah, yeah, I can understand if you, so it sounds like if you, if that, if that hit a chord in you, then you may be one of those who can, and that's why I was recommending the book to you. I got that feeling from other things that I'd read. That you may be one of those who could be touched by it, um, by the ideas in Walden. So I would, I would encourage you to continue reading it, uh, you know, per your interest, 
I've read, been reading it on and off for you know decades, and I've, I don't think I finished the whole darn thing. I just read bits and pieces here and there. I take a yellow highlighter and I highlight the parts I like, and reflect on them sometimes. It's almost it's almost like a Bible, like going through the Bible. Uh, some people may do. It's it's, it's almost for me. It's a, I wouldn't go so far as to call it a holy text, but in terms of uh, wisdom that has has meant something to me, it is uh, sacred in that capacity. Dangerous words, for me at least. Um, Living to work and working to live, I can't talk too much about the book yet, but I can already tell Walden was a natural thinker. Um, if that's a thing. Yeah, I think, you, I think that is a thing. Seems to me that, the, that natural thinkers tend to accept not settle things easier in life. I consider you to be a natural thinker, but I'm not sure if I could say the same for the younger you. Interesting. Natural thinkers tend to accept not settle things easier in life. I think that's a really good way to describe it. Um, for example, I accept that life has no apparent meaning. That's the, probably the guiding principle in my life, is that there's no meaning to all of this. Uh, there is meaning to me, you know, for example, okay, you could take away from the idea that life has no meaning and say that, you know, the suffering of children has no meaning, you know, it's just fine. Well, I, I think that in the large scope of the universe, yeah, really it doesn't matter. I think you can, you, I mean, this is going to sound terrible, but you could, you know, the u- larger universe doesn't really care about the Jeffrey Dahmers in the world. They're, they're, they are they are motes of, like, stone. there are stones on a distant world of no significance, really. And that's because I, I, I don't, I have no reason to believe that there's any larger guiding principle. However, it does matter to me, because I choose to, uh, to believe that what Jeffrey Dahmer did, did was horrible. And I will rise and, and I, will, I will lay down my life um, hopefully, I would, I would like to think I'm that kind of man in the protection of the innocent because I hold those values. So although, although I don't think the values are universal, they don't resonate through the universe, echo across space and time, they are, uh, they are something that I, I hold dear and uh, I, 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 a lot of my fellow human beings do as well. So we have those values there. So I accept that. I accept that. I don't settle for, uh, I don't settle for something that would also might make me comfortable, like thinking that there was a... Um, a divine uh, overlord that uh, is is keeping track of things and uh, settling for that on, on, on limited or no evidence. So I think you're right. And you conclude by saying thanks for asking. Well, my friend, I'm uh, very happy to, uh, it, to 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 have a chance to respond. Your uh, email and keeping up with you is has been a lot to me. I I'm, I really am. You know, if there's anybody who's a cheerleader for you, and I'm going to be a cheerleader with a cedar bra. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is the very thing that makes me sneeze, okay? Here we go. I could probably do better. No, I don't want to. I could do it with something green. Oh, I can do it. I don't have to rip it off. I'll do it with this, okay? Green leaf, okay? Ready? Ra, ra, sis, boom, ba. You, you, who can do it? We, you can do it. We, who says we can? We say you can. We know you can. You're a good man. Ra, ra, sis, boom, ba. I've just become a cheerleader for you, my friend. And for anybody else out there uh, who is struggling to um, make their own way through life, and to think their way through life, uh, to to accept realities that they discover and not necessarily settle, that cheers for you as well. Let's keep in touch, my friend, and I'll talk to you later. See you later. Bye-bye. Time for me to pack up my bags and move on down the road, river. See ya.